What's going on? I'm Darieth Chisholm. Welcome to Hustle and Heart TV. Do you ever get frustrated that you can't grab the rest of your favorite lip color, makeup or mascara out of the tube? Worse, do you know that they say that like 15 to 20% of that goes to waste? Well, not if you have Nikki's magic wand. Nikki Narvaez Mans tells me she never really had an entrepreneurial spirit and figured that she'd be working her nine to five until retirement. Well, all of that changed back in December 2009 while she was out running errands. Nikki was chatting with her college friend and thinking about how she'd just made a purchase of lipstick and lip gloss and she couldn't get another drop out of it and was looking for more of it and couldn't find it. And then all of a sudden the thought came to her and the journey began. After many phone calls to patent and business attorneys, design consultants, and manufacturers, Nikki could have cried, she told me, when she held her first wand in her hand. A mere thought, now a product. Nikki's magic wand was first available to the public back in December 2012, and Nikki and her friend are now business partners and distributing Nikki's magic wand. She's got a great story, and I can't wait to share it with you up next on Hustle and Hard TV. You're watching Hustle and Heart TV, a video podcast show that spotlights expert advice from top money earners, successful entrepreneurs, superstar network marketers, and leading authorities in business and marketing. I'm Darius Chisholm. I'm inviting you into my home and I'm bridging my own personal success as an entrepreneur, MLMer, news anchor, and now video podcast show host to help you leverage more tools and resources, make more money, and generate more ways to take action, become a rock star, and love your journey. All right, Nikki, we get to talk all I about your know. magic wand and all of the fun things that are happening for you in business these days. Yes, yes, I'm so excited. Great. Thank you for coming. And Thank you for, for yeah. being a part of Hustle and Heart TV. It means the world. I've been following you for some time, and I love what you've been doing with your business. Thank you. So tell us a little bit more about uh, Nikki's magic wand and, and, and how you how you came about creating this cute little Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, oh goodness, uh, you know we're coming up on two years now um, from when the website opened, December sixteenth. So we're coming up very soon, uh, which is amazing to me. It has been a wild ride. So I guess if we go back, uh, we really need to go back more than two years, back to oh nine. Uh, just. Being frustrated, like so many other folks, um, having some kind of tube of makeup. In my particular case, it was a tube of lipstick, lip gloss, and uh, I had just bought it a, a couple a couple weeks prior, and I could not get another drop out. That applicator um, that it came with, I just could not get another drop out. And I was on the phone with a, a dear friend of mine, and I said, I, I need to invent something to get this out. Really joking, just kind of making conversation. And she said, you should. And it's called Nikki's Magic Wand, all in the same breath. So Wait, she said, you should do this. Yes. And it's called Nikki's Magic Wand. Does she hire herself out to work? <laughs> I mean, like, seriously, you right. start a business idea and put a name to it and you go. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. That's one of my favorite kind of stories because it's so amazing. That never happens, right? You kind of write ideas down of names over and over again. Um, so she's had that on the spot. So instead of leaving that sort of at the red light, as people say, I, I went home and I sketched it up. And quite frankly, didn't know what to do after that. Had no idea. I've worked in... Um, compliance my entire life this is actually my 20th year um, right out of college so started working working downtown in uh, 1994 and so um, first in com as a compliance officer and now um, in compliance and HR in a in a fortune 500 company so it was just completely foreign to me and um, we decided we got online, good old internet, and just said, you know, what can we do? And initially, we said, well, we'll get we'll get with a licensing company. They sort of said, okay, we'll do everything, we'll fund it, and then we'll own a piece of it at the end. We thought that sounded fine. We didn't know what else to do anyway, so we did that. We submitted it. They did a full evaluation. They really, really loved it, but it just scored just a few points shy of their scale of fully funding it. So it, it was sort of like. Yeah, we liked it, you know, but good luck with it. Um, and we were back at square one. So again, back to the internet and manufacturers, and it just began the process of having to take baby steps. And this is something that I think is important to mention because I've, I talk to a lot of people who 
tell me they don't get an opportunity to meet very many inventors. And um, it's very easy to put something down. It's very, very easy, whether it's capital or you've just kind of run out of your knowledge base. It's extremely easy to put it down. And I did in 2010. I really kind of, after we submitted it that January and they said, oh, you know, thanks, but no thanks. Um, I, I had just become uh, a manager at my job and I wanted to focus on that. And it was easy to put this down because I didn't know what to do. Um, and a lot of times that's an, that's an uncomfortable place. It's a place that a lot of people find themselves when you, you're, you know, you're trying to, to figure it out and you've got this vision of where you want to go and what you want to create and you, get, you hit these, these stumbling blocks and then you, as you say, just put it down and think, ah, it's not possible. Right. But clearly that didn't happen for you. No, no. I We decided to pick it up again and that person who named it, uh, she came on as a business partner. So uh, we've been in this journey together. She's in Atlanta. And um, picked it up and I guess the first thing I did was I just went to the internet and, and said, well, I went to Facebook specifically and said, are any of you patent attorneys? And somebody raised their hand and said, yeah, I'm a patent attorney. So we knew that was one of the first things we had to do. We had to get the idea um, submitted to the patent office and so we did do that in 2010 and and then there is a time during uh, which it's with the office where you can't talk about it right so you have to sort of lay low um, but during that time also shortly after just one day I typed in manufacturers in Pennsylvania and no one seemed to have the the tool the machine that I needed uh, to make this the small plastic so so this is what it looks like and so nobody nobody seemed to have at least in Pennsylvania the machine that it would that would be required but there was a referral and a referral and a referral um, and I ended up of course needing a prototype so I was told I called a prototype place and they said oh no you you're you know you're, you have this all wrong. You need to have it designed first. We don't. If you call us up, we don't know what we should make the prototype out of. We don't know how long it is. We don't know how wide it is. And I was thinking, oh right. Now you, get, <laughs> now you have to make the prototype. Yes. <laughs> so thankfully, they referred me to um, a gentleman out in Exton, PA, and he's a design consultant. And all I did was I gave him my very crude sketch. Um, I sent him some uh, half-used lip gloss tubes and told him this is the problem and this is the proposed solution. And he began sketching and making AutoCAD drawings and, and making and, you know, rigging up sort of the end of a hanger with a piece of rubber on the end. And so those early prototypes were really, really uh, cool. And, um, and so then it, we got prototypes made. He facilitated that, and uh, and we started. He started to send them to us, and you know we started to take a look. And you started then testing. Obviously, I, you know I love that you. For you, this was very much about trying to solve somebody's problem. Yes. And for anyone you know watching who you know has reached what you think is the end of the tube of lipstick or mascara or what have you, but you know there's more there. Yes, it could be frustrating. You saw that as a problem, and yes. you felt the need to to solve that. And right. Um, then, of course, you ran into your own problems in terms of doing it, but you kept sourcing it out until you found someone to do it. He gives you the prototype back, you start testing it, where does it go from there? So I start testing it, I start talking with friends because that was one of the first things you need to do. If you're going to have a business, you need to know that people will actually consider this a problem and would purchase. So I wrote up a 20, 20 25 um, number questionnaire and just started showing people the wand, letting them look at it, letting them use it, the very, very rough prototype of it, and asking them, what would you pay? Do you have this problem? And what I learned early on is before I would get done describing the problem, people would stop me. Oh, gosh, yes, I have a drawer full of half-used things. I have these colors from this company that have been discontinued. It's my favorite, but I cannot throw it away. And the statistics say they're 15 to 20 percent is left in those tubes so uh, a lot of people see it and it's mocking them in there they don't they don't want to throw it away although so many of us do because you want that color again or, mm -hmm. you know um, so yeah so we started testing sort of found the sweet spot for the pricing and then um, after looking at lots of prototypes getting them sent from next and sending them back saying eh, uh, let's do this let's tweak that uh, then we um, the same gentleman went out and got us quotes to see who could make them up for us. So you, it's interesting because you took the pulse of friends that you knew who already 
had this problem, mm -hmm. asked them questions around what they thought would be a price point yep. and what they'd be willing to pay, and then you went about pricing it. Correct. That's wonderful. And not, not that a lot of people don't do that, but most people go to the market and say, well, this is what everyone else is doing. Mm -hmm. you, you felt the need to go the opposite way and say, what would, what would they pay? Mm -hmm. And can I get this done and still have profit to run right. my business? Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it, from the very beginning, and I'm very, this is one of the things I'm most proud of. From the very beginning, we really did, I know this sounds like, you know, talk, but we really did think or try to think of the consumer. We tried to, from the, from the inception of the thought, right, it was about, I know I have this problem. I'm wasting money. I know other people are wasting money. I know people want to save money. It's hard out here. People don't want to, there, there's a lip gloss out on the market that's $42. Um, people want every bit of that. So um, we tried to think of the consumer throughout the process. What would you be willing to pay? And because we didn't want to price it too low, of course, for our benefit, you know, that, to our detriment, but we also did not want to price it um, uh, too high so that we wouldn't have any sales. Yeah. When we come back, I want to talk a little bit more about just how you get to certain numbers mm -hmm. and based on production, uh, marketing, all of those other things. Uh, and then also for anyone who's watching who may in their mind have this great idea and yeah. don't know where to start. Sure. You know, especially when there's an invention involved and you've got to do a rough sketch. You told us that story, but I bet there's a little more we can get in terms of how you get started yes. when you've got an invention. So we've got that and a whole lot more with Nikki All right. when we come back. Sounds good. Are you looking for a way to advertise your business, product, or service? Why not do it here on Hustle & Heart TV? We'd be happy to send you our media kit for show sponsorship and advertising. Reach out to us at info at dariathchisholm.com or give us a call at 412-692-1600 and we'll send you a media kit with all the information. <laughs> One place for all your insurance needs? Of course. See State Farm Agent Steve Chris. Call or stop by today. Trouble can find anyone. At Frank Walker Law, we take the time to understand your situation and work tirelessly on your behalf. Hard-hitting representation when you need it the most. A real law firm getting real results. The Pink House, a 100-year-old attraction filled with the sweet, yummy smell of award-winning Wagner's chocolate. This unique boutique is unlike any candy shop you've ever experienced. The indulgent aroma delights you as you wander from room to room, and you'll discover Wagner's is more than just chocolate. Shop for your own candy-making supplies. Visit the gift shop, book your next party, and be a kid again in the fun ice cream parlor where they serve hot and cold drinks and Hershey's ice cream. The signature chocolates are handmade with care and attention to detail. You'll be amazed at the favorite offerings that keep generations returning to this family-owned gym. Chocolate-covered pretzels and Twinkies, caramel apples, homemade biscotti, and so much more. This family-friendly experience is worth the stop in Finleyville to experience a 37-year-old tradition. Or order online at thepinkhouse.biz and give a call to 724-348-2238. So there's clearly so much thought in having to, to develop this, the box, the branding, the marketing, the, 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 everything that goes into just getting something um, out. Uh, so, what is the cost of, of a wand? A, the, a wand is nine ninety five. Okay, so nine ninety five. You're going to get a lot of use out, out of it, and as Absolutely. you pointed out, if you bought a forty two dollar bottle of lipstick, it's worth it if you're going to get a few more. A few more. It's going to pay for itself it's right pay away. For itself. Yeah. Um, but when you think about when small business owners or entrepreneurs who've got this great idea and they're 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 sketching something that they want to have invented, yeah. there are a lot of other costs associated oh with my it. Gosh. It's not like you're. I'm becoming a part of your company and I'm now just going to sell it and take a percentage of it. Right. You have to think about all of the costs. Absolutely. How do you do, how do you go through that process of developing a product, pricing it and still having profit available to move forward? Sure. Sure. That's an excellent question. Um, there are, there are things you would never even think about that go into, um, 
getting a, a product from your head to your hand. Um, so many, so many things. So initially, you, you sort of want to do the legal aspect. So as I mentioned, getting it with the patent office right away. Then if you intend to have a business, you need to determine what kind of business. So there's an S Corp and there's LLC and people have to explain that to you if you don't know. So you have to hire a business attorney to do that. Um, then there is um, the design consultant as I mentioned and, and then there's before you even, well maybe simultaneously in our case, I reached out to someone who I knew did logos and so she uh, met me one day down in the waterfront with her laptop and showed me some ideas and one thing that I don't actually don't mention much but the way she initially designed the logo is we knew that it was going to have a cap so actually it must have uh, must have come right after the design consultant got to it because initially we, we weren't sure about the cap but she made it so that the logo would fit right at the seam where they meet and so when you separate them actually the top is an M and the bottom is a W Oh, so it sure makes is. it Nikki's yeah. magic wand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the way she designed the end. So those kinds of things. And this gold is a particular color, right? So there's so many things to consider. She was somebody that was paid hourly. So to get to that point, that nine ninety five that I talked about, the retail price, um, obviously the early uh, surveys, um, uh, you know, affected that price uh, decision. And then thankfully the cost. Um, left us with a very nice margin. But there's so many things that you don't think about. Um, padded envelopes to send them. Um, the bags that I pack them in to, to send them out. Uh, tape. <laughs> uh, labels, uh, business cards. Initially I was putting business cards and it's funny, I was making this very full package initially because I felt that people needed a lot of education. I don't do that quite as much now, but um, a lot goes into that package, and then you have to really break that down to determine, okay, the difference between nine ninety five and you know this. Are we clearing a profit and keeping track of that? So yeah. there's a, there's a lot to think about. There's a ton to yes. think about, and as we always know, that that that's you know really important to doing, including making certain decisions. I mean, once you start down a certain direction and you mm -hmm. um, you know ordered a thousand of these or whatever it is, you've got to stick with it for that time, unless you just decide to trash it and start over. Lots of entrepreneurs, I'm sure, have face that uh, and or may face that in this process and so it, those are things to just be totally aware of. Oh you do. Uh, that certainly the initial order and in, in my case the minimum was 5,000 so you are you know committed. You're committed. <laughs> You're committed. You know you hear these stories about people having things piled up in their garage and that's not what you want so we did thankfully uh, so so through those first five and uh, and then made another order and made some tweaks the second time around. Um, for instance uh, on these boxes these the little tabs these lines in here are called uh, die cut lines mm -hmm. and they ask you how deep do you want them to go in because that determines how secure your box is. So if they go in too far, you can't get the tab out. If they're not far enough, the product falls out. Things I had no knowledge of. <laughs> Barely really understand now, but I had to learn the color of the gold on the box, the font, the size of the box, um, putting this tab at the top so that it could hang in a drugstore um, when that time comes, not if, but when. So all of those things to consider. Yeah, and I, what what is it that keeps you on course when you feel as though I've, I just can't make another decision. And am I, is this right? I mean, we, you, we mentioned earlier about getting to the point where you put it down, but sometimes you get so far in that you really can't afford to do that. And then you've got to find some place deep down inside that tells you to just keep moving. Yeah, it's true. It's true, Darius. Initially in that year, uh, maybe half a year that we put it down, um, I really did have to when I picked it back up, I did because there was that voice, that, ver that voice that you hear people talk about that told me, you weren't given this idea for no reason. Um, and wh whomever you believe in, whatever higher power, I genuinely felt I wasn't granted this idea 
to let it lay by the wayside, to let someone else make this decision, to let someone else take this ball and run with it. So I kept going back. If it was a baby step, maybe I did something once a week, but I was doing something, and then it became once a day, and then, of course, multiple times per day. But um, when you're in too deep, as you mentioned, and your funds are there, and your time is there, and you've had some level of exposure, um, anything can really come to throw you off. Something's going on with your children. Um, it could be your marriage. It could be your, if you have a nine to five, um, it could be a sick parent. Um, plenty of things can come in to really throw you off and you have to stay focused. This, this is a whole nother job. I actually, I still work a nine to five. So a lot of times I want to come home and sit on the couch. I don't, you know, and you have to really force yourself. You have to, I shouldn't make it sound like that because it is a pleasure, but you know, sometimes flicking those channels is very enticing and you have to stay focused because I know that the idea was given to me for a reason. Yeah, really important point. Building team, having people around you, clearly you don't do all of this by yourself as much as many entrepreneurs do wear a thousand and one hats. I'm sure over time you had to learn to do that. Mm -hmm. um, what are what are some of the aspects that your, your team plays and how should people source to do that? Uh, whether they do it full-time, part-time, hire a, a VA. I mean, let's talk about team building. Yeah, that's a that's a great point. And I tell you, I have to be frank, even two years in, um, I am still I, I still need a fuller team. Um, it's um, it's my business partner and I. Last summer, thirteen, we had a summer intern. We did not this year. And I tell you, I felt that void. Um, I still um, still during this time um, send out every package, manage every order, um, make the labels. I'm doing that. So um, that's the um, that's that's the trick. But so. I do want a team. I do. I do still need someone to manage the social media aspects. I need someone to, to help me. Um, you know, I need a personal assistant, really. To, to <laughs> you need a wife. I, I, mean, I, I do. Know, like, I do. I need a wife. <laughs> yeah, a whole I need, bunch oh of things, my right? gosh, I do. I do. I absolutely do. So, um, uh, yes. Yeah, so that's the thing. I. It's. It's a team building is a process for me right now. Um, I really do need the help because I'm finding there are a myriad of things. I make these very long to-do lists, and I, as most people, get pleasure from crossing things off. Um, and I'm just not crossing them off quite as fast as I would like to. And I know somebody else could help me, you know, help me cross them off faster. Yeah, it is, it is tough when you're at that point, especially if you, if you can really see this and you're trying to build a list and you're trying to figure it out. And, um, you know, oftentimes you, you know you can't and you've got to start to reach for help. Mm -hmm. and, you know, even if it's part-time or something yeah. that um, a family member, a friend, someone that, that you can hire to assist you in some level um, can be so important and, and not only gratifying for you, but gratifying for them too, because maybe for them, they also see where it can go. Exactly. And so when you are um, thinking about your next level and how you, how you plan to scale, yes. uh, there's going to be a team in place because we're just going to pray that That's right. That's right. Into space, Thank right? you. Right? Thank so you. We'll I need that. one. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. But what does that look like for you? And what does, you know, assuming all of those parts were in place, what does that look like for you? I tell you, the ultimate goal, as I say, is um, definitely, you know, like Kleenex, like, uh, like Xerox, household name, definitely a household name. Um, uh, someone says Nikki's Magic Wand, you know exactly what it is, you know exactly what it does. That is the goal. So initially we did that grassroots, that kind of very organic building with Facebook and, and blogging, and we still do that, and Twitter and Pinterest and Instagram. Um, but it's figuring out, you know, how to continue to grow, whether that's, um, you know, PR, whether it's ads. And so that ultimate picture with that full team in place um, will include multiple retail establishments, big chains, small boutiques, but, you know, chic uh, spots, salons, um, spas, those kinds of um, retail establishments where we are on the shelves. Right and, next uh, to the tube of lipstick yes, and yes, mascara, right? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. So that's the, that's the big goal. Um, also, in addition to that, uh, a lot of times we get the request for a longer one. 
um, lotions, shampoos, things to get those kinds of things out. Um, and molds are expensive, so you know I tell people that um, we'll get to it. We promise. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know there's a there's a long life ahead for this, um, and we'll we'll talk a little bit more about where where that becomes even outside of the retail establishments, but in a longer tube and things like that. Okay. Also, just balancing life and family and work because we know that you know it's very busy entrepreneurs. It's tough to do that, and and maybe how you do it and how you might encourage someone. And then um, those much needed steps that you as a new budding um, developer of, of something that needs to be invented or an inventor, um, those much needed steps that you can share with them. So we'll, we'll take a look at all of that when we come right back. Okay. So what steps have you taken lately to take your business to a whole nother level? Or are you stuck or stalled? I'd love to hear from you. So send me an email at info at dariathchism.com or you can like me on Facebook at Dariath Chism or on Twitter at Dariath Chism and share your journey. Ask me a question, give me a topic or two or a potential show guest. Looking forward to hearing from you. Hi, I'm John Perneris of the John Perneris Agency in Ambridge, Pennsylvania. One of my biggest pet peeves is when the IRS rips you off. We've been in business since 1950 and for 65 years we have been committed into saving you money on your taxes. We keep the IRS off your back and out of your pocket. You can visit us on our website at johnperneresagency.com. Find us on Facebook at Facebook John Perneris Agency for money saving tips and you can call us at 724-266-4100. To book an appointment now. Maybe your manuscript has been rejected for the tenth time. Maybe you're already published, but sales are almost non-existent. The defeated feeling is the same. It's time to get it done right. Rochelle Carter, the author of The Seven-Step Guide to Entrepreneurship, has the answers that will turn your career around. Rochelle leads you through the powerful seven steps guiding you as you become a successful author and entrepreneur. Build your writing talents into a business, a platform that can sell you and everything you write, giving you what every writer wants, a continuing money flow. Rochelle Carter shares the tried and true, as well as the new, most effective, smart and affordable steps to plan your publication and sell more books. To be a successful professional writer, The Seven Step Guide to Entrepreneurship is a must read, a guide you will return to time and time again. Hello, I'm Dr. Shelley Hibsky, the president of Inspiring Lives LLC and a professor at Robert Morris University. And you're watching Hustle and Heart TV. All right, so for all of you budding inventors um, who are, have all of these fabulous ideas and sketches and things in your head about, you know, wanting to take, you know, whatever it is that you're dreaming of and actually turn it into a product of, of any uh, sort, what would you tell them would be good first steps for them? Um, and we, we did already talk about the legal aspects and things like that, but, but beyond that. Yeah, sure. Well, the first step is a very basic step, and it is genuinely believing in it. I think people decide they want to be entrepreneurs or get involved with something sometimes that their cousin's doing, their friend is doing, and they don't really believe in it. And it's very difficult to market something, to get people to buy something that you don't believe in, that you feel funny about, that you don't think works, that you don't think um, is effective. And so that is job number one, and that was one of the things that kept me going in those down times. Was I was thinking, people need this. I, I, I need, I used to joke, I need to make it because I need it. <laughs> if no one else gets one, I know that I'll have I'll one. I'll have 5,000 of them. I'll have 5,000 of them, yes, for the rest of my life. Um, you have to believe in it initially. And, and capital is a tough thing um, uh, because a lot of times, it, it, there's no, you know, you make what you make or you save what you save, and a lot of people don't have additional options. We were fortunate in that we had some options, some financial options that allowed us to go forward because we're talking multiple thousands of dollars for all aspects, for the manufacturing, for the design, for the attorneys, just every aspect of it, every corner you turn, somebody had their hand out for a couple thousand dollars, and we were like, yeah. So, um, that's tough, but I will say this, people spend things like, this is, you know, practical advice, but people spend 
things like a new couch. Uh, uh, they'll they'll buy a new couch with their income tax return or something. If it's important to you, maybe you know dress up the old couch and fo take that money and start the process. You know, pay somebody to sketch it up for you. Maybe make your website. If you have a service kind of in industry, then enhance your skills. Make sure you know your your plan is tight. Um, one of the things that's so important, if you can, pay people for what they do. That's extremely important. A lot of times people try to muddle along figuring certain things out. I could have never run an AutoCAD program and <laughs> make the, made these things up in 3D on the computer. Pay people for what they do if you can. I mean, it's, it, it's going to get done faster. It's going to be done more professionally, potentially. And... Um, and, and you'll get farther that way. So um, stay focused and you need to carve out the time. I'm one of those old school planners. You know, we all have these smartphones, but I get out the paper and the pencil and I write down exactly what I need to do. Um, I, I print out a calendar and I write a task on it, multiple tasks on each day um, to, stay, to stay on track and so. Yeah, I, I'm I'm a tablet girl. Oh, I, just, yeah. I write lists, things on yeah. pieces of paper, it's stuff every I'm also a pile and uh, a piler, yes. so well, that yes. makes things even more crazy. But yeah. but it, there's something to be said about creating the action plan, not necessarily on the phone, but just the old fashioned way, yeah. I guess, if, if you will. Not that the other way doesn't work, because clearly there are a lot of successful people who Absolutely, are able to do that. Yes. I totally understand that. You've had some fanfare though around this, which is really nice. Yeah. Um, been to a couple of fashion weeks and have had yeah. some some national publicity around it, which is great. Uh, you know what? I tell you what, um, it was amazing. We last year was the first full year in business and and it was it had a great start at the end of 2012 and, and the beginning of 2013, and then you do you find yourself sort of finding finding your um, your space and and your path. And we decided it. This is one of those things that I have to keep remembering. We actually applied to QVC. They have a Sprout program, and that's where it's kind of up and coming. Um, entrepreneurs, you compete against uh, two other products. Whoever gets the most votes uh, wins a purchase order with QVC.com. And we applied twice, once in 2012, and quite frankly, I have to chuckle at my application because the wand wasn't even made. They were asking me questions, what's the wholesale price? I was like, I don't know. So I wasn't at all surprised they rejected that application. But we then applied another time, mid-2013, uh, and they also quickly know. Unbeknownst to me, my summer intern applied for us about a week after I had applied and gotten a rejection. And they, and I don't know what he wrote, <laughs> but they took it and we actually went up against the other two products August 31st and we won. Yay. Yes, yeah. yes. So we won a purchase order and um, we've sold out there. We went to Fashion Week, which was amazing. We were in the celebrity gifting suite um, and you know gave wands to celebrities, to the press. And, we, and something that's very important that we were told by the Institute of Entrepreneurial Excellence, they are a group out of the University of Pittsburgh that works with small businesses. They said, don't ever give a wand away or rarely give a wand away without getting information to follow up. And so it did not matter. We were asking celebrities for their personal emails. We were asking the press, and many of them gave them to us. We said, we just want to check with you and see how you like it. And then the press, we were following up to, to you know, make requests for stories and features, and a, a great deal of them did that. So it was an awesome awesome experience and we had an opportunity to see a fashion show someone just came through the suite and said what are you girls doing tonight and we said going home resting our feet from standing in the suite all day and they said no come to this fashion show so um yeah last year was was amazing that is it wonderful amazing. what does 2015 look like for you oh wow i tell you 2015 is going to be and 2014 was great as well um it, it didn't sort of have that you know the fashion week qvc fanfare but um it it moved at a nice steady pace. Um, 2015, we want to turn up the heat. Uh, we, we definitely want to turn up the heat. We want to get some, some uh, we were fortunate to get in real simple and allure um, features there. And so we want to get more, more big glossy press. Um, we've had some TV features, which were nice. Um, and so we want more of that. But we, de we we're desperate to get on these shelves. 
the Ulta shelves, the the Dwayne Reeds, the Walgreens, the you know the Sephoras. That that's that's the goal. So that's that's our plan for 2015. And how um, do you plan to do that and balance family? I mean, we you've got family, you've got other life, you have a full time job. I mean, how do you keep it all organized and balanced? Yeah, that's that is the trick, Darius. And I think I'm really going to have to take a cold a hard cold look at the budget and really try to figure out a way to to build that team, at least to add a team member because. Um, uh, it's it's extremely difficult to do. I don't have any plans, at least in 2014, to step away from my job. I have two children, and now actually a new grandson. So um, there's there are a lot of responsibilities, and there are, there's a lot to think about and do. And so I, I'm going to have to get some help, whether it's with social media, whether it's applying, you know, to to Alta and to Sephora for me, somebody to help me um, in those in those times when I can't be right there. This is a very simple but yet um, useful tool for people. And, and for you, it's just literally just pull it right out, stick it into the, where, you know, a tube of lipstick, mascara, what have you, and use it. Can be used over and over again. Correct. But a lifesaver for, for many people. Um, tell us, give us, if you will, two simple points that people can take away from with this show. Okay. Um, we like to wrap with something called our hustle tip and our heart tip. Okay. And it's your opportunity to drill this down to two simple things. Oh, wow. What would you tell someone as a hustle tip in terms of just working hard and yeah. staying with it in the heart around loving what you do? Sure. I think the hustle tip is um, you don't have the same, well, we all have the same 24 hours, but you absolutely have to view yours in a different way. If you have to fill orders at five o'clock in the morning or you have to fill them at midnight, then that's what you have to do. And uh, hopefully you're doing it with pleasure. Hopefully you're doing it knowing that it's for a greater good. Um, it's it's hard. Um, you're tired, <laughs> but um, people don't, you know, get ahead sitting on the couch and flicking channels. They, like it is enticing, but you just don't. The heart tip. Um, one thing that's extremely important is being thankful and giving back. From the very first one I ever sent in the mail, I have written a handwritten thank you note, and I do to this day, every single order. I write a handwritten note and thank people for their order. So I'm grateful. I'm thankful. I just order thank you cards that say, without you, there is no us. I believe that. And we give back. We had a 12 months of giving uh, program this year. We um, supported children with autism, veterans, the homeless. It is not just about turning a buck. It is about um, doing doing good. If I have Nikki's magic wand and I'm saying that I want to spread the word of this company, this product, then that affords me the opportunity to get into some places and give back. And that's important to us. We just we we appreciate um, other people's help with the, with the product, being supportive of it and we want to give back. And here's an update. Uh, Nikki tells me that her product is now once again on QVC. So that is pretty powerful that she gets another run on QVC. I'm so proud of you, Nikki. Congratulations. And here's another thing to keep in mind. If you've got a business idea, some thought that, um, you know, this product that you've been dreaming up could become a reality, go for it. You never know whose hands it's going to end up in. Hey, it's Tam Michelle with Tie the Knot Tuesday here at the Pittsburgh Marriott City Center where we take care of all of your event and meeting needs brilliantly. So today we're going to talk about welcoming your guests. You'll have a lot of guests who will stay overnight with us here at the hotel. What nice way to greet them than buy a welcome bag, whether it's a survival kit for the day after or introducing them to Pittsburgh hotspots or even leaving them the itinerary of what's going on for the weekend. Welcome your guests with style. For your wedding and event needs, like us on Facebook at the Pittsburgh Marriott City Center and call us at 412-918-1373. And ask for me, Tam Michelle. Keep smiling. This is not a hotel. It's an idea that travel should be brilliant. Because it's not only about where you're staying, it's about where you're going. The promise of spaces far beyond your imagination. We're here to advance the art of hosting so you can make the most of your journey. Pittsburgh Marriott City Center. Travel brilliantly. 
Join Claritin police officer and community leader James Cusack on the next episode of Hustle and Heart TV.